yes, you can travel on $30 a day, and I'll tell you how to do it. Um, and I used to spend $500 a day, so I know what I'm talking about. You don't have to spend that much money. Okay, so the key thing here is the country you choose. India, Nepal, Central America, uh, Bolivia, Ecuador, not Argentina and Brazil. They're not so low cost. That's going to be harder to spend $30 a day. Now, if you're couch surfing, I did that in Sardinia. That's how they pronounce it, but us foreigners pronounce it Sardinia. A big island off the coast of Italy below Corsica. I couch surfed and camped to make it affordable. I still spent, um, I don't remember what I spent, but I had a lot of fun. So, um, here's the big three costs. The accommodation, the food, and the transportation. So if you budget yourself, you can still have a blast and have an incredible experience. So, in the countries that are less costly, like Bolivia and Peru and India, Nepal, Thailand, it's really a good country to not spend a lot of money. You can spend $15 there and get a room with your own bathroom. Now, you used to only spend uh, $10 a day in Thailand, and once I bumped up to 15 things got a lot better. Um, India, you can stay in ashrams for between $5 and $10. There's a wonderful ashram in Rishikesh, Parmath Ashram, for $10 a day. You can uh, stay overnight, get your own room and bathroom, and three meals a day. Unless they raised it. I haven't been in a few years. And I don't mean the 1990s. I mean 2009 and up. Um, so... Make sure you're getting up-to-date information because a lot of people go into how they went there in the 80s and they did this. Everything is different in 20 or 30 years. So, back to your accommodation. Um, in Burma, it's between $20 and $30 a night for accommodation for your own room. So, uh, if you're not sharing, you're going to end up spending more. Now, food. Eat local. In Thailand, you can spend less than $10 a day for Thai food that you buy on the street. Three meals, folks, because you don't get a kitchen in very many places to cook. Uh, they don't have hostels. Well, they do in Bangkok, and I think there's some kind of hostel -y places in Chiang Mai. But I ended up renting an apartment there because I liked Chiang Mai and doing some volunteer opportunities, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, the other thing is uh, Guatemala, Lake Atitlan. You can rent a house for $300 a month right on the lake. I did it with a view. Um, you can also uh, pay $10 for a share um, kitchen, share bathroom. I ended up staying at that place for a month in San Marcos. Um, so there's that. But if you're not eating Western food, which is not going to be that great, and you're going to pay too much, eat the local food. Find the people that are on the street, uh, usually in Thailand there's many, that you know. Thailand's a very clean country, so don't be afraid you're going to get sick. I mean, of course, um, I've gotten sick in many countries, but um, uh, you just never know. You can get sick in a five-star hotel. But there's affordable medical in these countries as well. And it's highly Thailand, very high quality medical care. And I have gotten most of my medical care done there in the last uh, seven years. So back to accommodation, food, don't eat Western food. You're going to pay more and it won't be as good. So eat the local food and you'll spend less. And then transportation. If you have a choice, go with the slowest option. So the buses in Thailand are incredible. The high class, first class, VIP it's called. Um, I think, what is it, $20 or less to take the 
top tier bus from Chiang Mai to Bangkok one way. That's cheap. Um, and then there's also uh, low-cost airlines that have specials. So there's that. They have special airlines that are low-cost in India. So when you're looking at the country, don't move around to other countries a lot. You're going to end up spending a lot more money. Stay within that country and explore it. You could go to Ecuador to five, for five weeks. I did that, and it was a very difficult country to leave. There's always another wonderful place to go to. Banus Hot Springs, Cuenca, um, Otavalo, Quito was um, a little too big of a city for me, but that's got a lot of good things too. So explore more deeply, and you will when you're on a bus with Jesus paraphernalia swinging from the mirror and the Catholic music on volume 22 and there's a flounder in a bucket by your feet and a box of chickens right next to you on the seat. And it's fun. You're going to meet people. You're going to talk to everyone. Um, that's what I do. But if you want to be alone, you can. You almost have to work hard to be alone. So $30 a day. You can, if you went to uh, Europe and couch surfed and ate out of grocery stores or farmers markets, you could just about do it. But um, you know that book, it's a bestseller, $50 a day. You can do it on $30 a day. I've done it and I've done it on less. Uh, when I volunteer. So, getting into volunteering, this cannot be arranged on this. You have to do it eye to eye. This is what my son taught me. Um, find out, you know, go to a low-cost country. Although I did get a very great um, opportunity to uh, do photography and writing at a wonderful place in Argentina, Obra, at a home for abandoned people, and I found out about that place at a hostel. Thank you, Jenny. She had a connection and she was in the bunk below me and I heard her talking about it. So you'll hear about opportunities. You can put free volunteering into the country that you would like to find opportunities for and you can get room and board. I did a room and board in Colombia in Villa de Leyva. I met, you have to just meet the person that can make the decision, but these nonprofits are pretty open-minded. Uh, they might need photography for their websites. They don't have good photography. They might need to learn how to speak English. So in Villa de Leva, I taught uh, salsa dancing for babies at the preschool. Then I would go upstairs and see my friend Madeline. She's a hundred years old. And she would speak Spanish and I would speak English. And we had a wonderful time. I'll show you a picture of her. She had a voice like a teenager. So, you have to go to the country first, find the person that can decide. Put the word out. You start telling people, oh, I want to teach English, I want to uh, do a room and board exchange, and then you tell them what you can do. Now, you have to work, but it ends up being not like work. It ends up being play. So, check it out. Comment below. Subscribe. Ask me questions. Um, there's many, many countries that you could do room and board with and teach English with no payment involved without doing the, um, the certification course, ESSEL, whichever that one is. Um, of course, that might be good if you wanted to be paid, but not completely necessary. So, um, let me know your thoughts and uh, enjoy your traveling and you can do it low cost. You don't have to be a millionaire. Namaste. Subscribe, comment below. Talk to you later.